I don't know if, I think everyone feels it. If you're ever at, at the top of a t tall building or looking down from a very tall height, there's some impulse to throw yourself over. It's not necessarily suicidal. No, but they say that vertigo is not the fear of falling, it's the desire to fall. Yes, and I, I've always felt that if I look down into the sea, from a cliff maybe, there's mm. been that almost should I or mm. shall I? I, I can't good. explain why, but it's always almost a gravity pull yeah. that <laughs> you really you go through a mental picture of seeing yourself falling. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you realise what you're doing. You think, crazy woman. Which one was first to you, music or the style? Um. Well, the music, but I think uh, the style or the image is important, but I don't mean in the way that someone like King is a million miles away from what I think is image and style and music. He is pure image, style and music, and I hate it. And uh, um, well, I think you can understand the difference. What sort of things do you read? I mean, is there any clear, I mean, Bradbury you mentioned, I mean, Bradbury yeah. is quite versatile. Um, It can be, I mean, it can range from Agatha Christie to Kafka. I mean, I literally, if there's a book lying around in it, the title's all right, and and I'm not... Fits in hand. Yes. And it's, you know, the first few pages have drawn me in, and I'll continue reading it. Um, last things I've read have been... Um, the Bette Davis story, My My Mummy's Keeper. It's a nice girl. Yes. Nice mummy. Nice mummy. <laughs> 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 but it's so perfect. Her face suits that dementia. <laughs> um, and then um, Breaking the Silence, which is about uh, lesbianism within convent walls. And uh, some cheap horror story I picked up abroad, and an Agatha Christie one. Mm. Was well, one of the horror stories when you, you know, when you started getting interested in literature, but the first thing you? Got yes, in? probably the pan book of different stories. I mean, a lot of them are very well written. Like Dulcie Gray is a very good writer of short horror stories, and again. Um, I'm quick to point out that horror can be the horror of boredom or <coughs> not just uh, awful. I think we still tend to make almost private records, records that you can listen to on your own late at night in your room or something, as opposed to records that are designed to be played in the car or... Oh, I think they're for a car, because that's very personal sometimes, driving. I think it's the only place many people actually have a chance to yeah. listen to. A lot of people are commuting there and back. It's yeah. the only place yeah. people listen to yeah. music. Yeah. 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 So, but uh, certainly I, I can't imagine many of our songs being mindless dance songs. That, and that's not saying that dance songs are bad. I, I love dance songs, but... No. It appears yeah. that people tend to stop what they're doing on a dance floor when a band sh even though it's a danceable song, they'll like... You'll notice certain people filtering out of the dance floor and waiting for the next boogie down. Because we've never um, had a producer, mm. we've always co-produced. And the beginning of last year felt like a good time to to have someone who could put in a bit more than just co-produce with us. I have a bit more knowledgeable distance from the music, and but also um, do what would, would be good for us. And so we decided we try and find a producer, someone that for future working a relationship would happen and uh, it'd be a lot easier to get what we want down rather than 
doing it, listening to it, and leaving it up to us what to do next. Um, and that failed. <laughs>